Okay, so in this demonstration, I will be showing you how to model this uh, particular component known as the Picatinny or the rails. Okay, notice on this assault rifle, there are three rails, or actually there are four rails altogether. There's an under rail, then there's a top rail, and then there's a side rail. Now I'll be describing how to model uh, this particular rail here. Now you notice that this rail, if I subdivide it by pressing number three, it looks like a mess. So I'll be creating a version where it is subdividable, right? So how do I get, how do I go along mod uh, modeling this rail? I'll usually start off with a cube. Okay, shift right mouse click and create a cube. And uh, from this cube, I'm gonna give it several subdivisions, one uh, on the width and the height. Okay, and I'm going to delete away half of this cube because I prefer to model half and mirror the other side. So with half of the cube deleted away and with the center position in the correct location, I'm going to duplicate special and I'm going to create an instance. I'm going to reset my duplicate special. I'm going to create an instance and due to the orientation, make sure the orientation of the cube follows mine if you want to follow this along, I'm going to duplicate along the negative X axis, duplicate special, and now you have uh, the half of the cube being duplicated. So now I want to create a, I want to create the sharp uh, corner that pokes out like this here. So I'm going to use the insert edge loop tool. So to activate that, go to edge mode, right mouse click edge, and then shift right mouse click and then insert edge loop tool. Now I'm going to go to the option box so that I can enable multiple edge loops and I'm going to select only one and use the equal multiplier so that when I click on the edge loop, it will be exactly at the center. Right. Holding down to Q to go to select, I'm going to go to edge mode, then select this edge and press W to move and then move it out until I have a basic element of the mini rail. Right. I'm going to select, go to wireframe mode by pressing 4, right mouse click, go to the marking menu and select vertex. I'm going to select the outer vertices and then pull it so that it matches the general shape of that Picatinny rail. So for this particular Picatinny rail, I'm going to just create the conventional one without the center groove. So uh, this version, which is not so elaborate. Again, if I press number 3, when I subdivide it, this is what it's going to look like. So this is not uh, good enough for me. So I will have to insert uh, more edge loops. But there's another tool that you can try to do that is uh, within this. There is this thing called the offset edge loop. Okay, this will allow me to increase or insert a couple of edge loops between a single edge loop. So this will help me create a much harder edge around here. So I'm inserting that in. Okay, so that I can have this sharp point here. And I'm going to select this edge here and move it in. Okay, and then now I'm going to insert more edge loops to tighten up the corners and edges. I'm going to insert one edge loop here. Okay, I made a mistake there. I'm going to go to insert edge loop, click on the edge to build up this corner, click on this edge to build up the corner. I'm going to do the same for this section here and vertically here. Let me just press number three and see what it looks like now. And yes, I need to have one more edge loop right about here. Okay, so now I want this edge to be supported. So I'm going to click and insert one supporting edge loop. And then finally one supporting edge loop at the bottom. Right, so I'm going to go to object mode and then inspect my handiwork. Okay, I definitely need one more edge loop around here to tighten up this corner. Another option will be to use the crease tool, but um, for this demonstration, I'm not going to use the crease tool. And maybe another one here. And if I were to hide the wireframe unshaded, yeah, so I have a nice piece which is subdividable. Okay, so now I have to extrude out. 
Okay, I made a, I should have extruded out this portion earlier on, but now I have to manually select the face. Okay, select all these faces here and shift right mouse click on the selected face and extrude the face. I'm going to press W and then pull the face out. Okay, so this will form the section of a single Picatinny rail piece. Okay, but if I were to subdivide this now, you notice that this corner here is destroyed because I've extruded out the portion here. And then I'm going to insert one edge loop to tighten up this area here. I want to insert the edge loop, push it right close to the edge. And because of my extrusion and because I'm using this uh, duplicate special, I'm creating this internal face, which I will need to delete away. So I'm going to select this internal face and press delete. Okay, and I'm just going to isolate the selection. Okay, I'm going to go to object mode, select this, isolate the selection, and I'm going to delete away all these internal faces. I've extruded out early on. Okay, this is only apparent when you are modeling this piece using the duplicate special. So now the internal faces are deleted. If I were to subdivide it again, uh, now it should look fine. And finally, I need to delete away the opposing face because we will be joining up multiple pieces uh, of this object later on. Okay, again, I'm going to delete away this face and these faces. And I'm going to insert one more edge loop close to here. So because I want the next component to join up to have a tight corner. And now this section here, I need to delete away the faces as well because we will be creating multiple, compo uh, multiple duplicates that will join to each other. So that's where the duplicate special comes in useful, All right? So right now, um, I have two halves. I want to join these two halves together. So first, I'll delete the history, Alt-Shift-D to get rid of the history. Right? And then I'm going to select both the duplicates. And then I want to combine them together. So mesh, combine. So once I, once I combine them, they become a single object. However, the center vertices are still not merged together. So you need to go to vertex mode. Okay, select the central vertices. Now, a good idea would be to turn on this view, uh, HUD, heads up display, uh, which I have open here. Go to display, heads up display. Make sure you turn on your polygon count so that you can see how many vertices are actually being selected. So if you have positioned everything nicely in the center, if not, if you can go to the front view and use your scale, yeah, I'm pressing 4 to go to wireframe. You can go to scale and then force the vertices to sit on top of each other. Then after that, go to mesh, okay, edit mesh, and then merge. Okay, I'm going to use the default uh, distance and then hit merge. Now watch carefully for vertices which are very close to one another. If they end up merging together, then you have a problem. Okay, just now we have 50 over vertices. Now it's down to 27. So now I know that this piece has been combined to form a single piece. Okay, let's go to shaded view and press number three to see what it looks like. Okay, it still looks good. Okay, now we are ready to duplicate this uh, Picatinny rail. Now, every time you do a merge or combine, you will notice that the outliner will generate all these transform nodes. You have to take care to remove all these transform nodes. Now, before you delete them, you will have to de delete your history, your edit history. So select your newly created Picatinny rail, press Alt Shift D to delete away the history. And select your transform node and delete them away. If you do not do this, okay, your outliner will be littered with a lot of unused transform nodes. So take note of that. So now we're going to duplicate and join the instances of this uh, Picatinny rail. So I'm going to go to edit, duplicate special, and take note of your orientation. And since we are moving the object, or rather uh, duplicating the object in the Z axis, okay. We are going to change the translate value in the duplicate special. Now for scale, I'm going to change it back to one. Okay, And if you're not sure, you can hit reset the settings. We're going to do instances. 
and then we're going to translate we're going to try a value of one unit negative one because i'm going to duplicate this picatinny rail towards the negative z-axis so press minus one in the z-axis i'm going to duplicate maybe two copies just to test it out first and hit duplicate special Okay, so you can see the one value is too small. You can see the duplicates are overlapping each other. So this doesn't work for me. I'm going to undo. So press Z to undo. Okay, and uh, at the same time, I'm going to take the opportunity to rename my Picatinny rail. I'm going to call it Picatinny rail underscore zero one. Okay, then I'm going to try that again. So now we know that one value is too small, so we're going to increase the value. So maybe minus one point. Let's try minus one point five, and then duplicate special. The one point five seems to be okay, but I think we need a slightly bigger value. So let's undo again. Okay, so now edit duplicate special, and we're going to use minus one point six. Okay, I think I'll stop at this value. There is still some overlap, but we can easily fix that. So to fix the overlap, all you need to do is uh, you have to select the original object. You can go to vertex mode. Okay, select the end vertices. Now I'm in wireframe mode by pressing number four. Okay, you can move the vertices back until they line up with the ends of the duplicate. Now I'm going to go to the right view. And I'm going to show you how you can move the last bits of vertices so that they snap into place. Okay, I'm going to press number one to go to uh, level one subdivision. Okay, so you can manually move it to location uh, to move into location, but this can be very difficult. So I'm going to select only the last group of vertices using the vertex snap. How to activate vertex snap? You hold down to the V key. And then you just move the last group of vertices until they snap into place. So now we are guaranteed that the vertices are overlapping the vertices. Okay, so now we are confident of duplicating multiple pieces. We select the last piece of instance. You can actually duplicate the instance, that's fine. So edit, duplicate special. Now I'm going to give it a much larger number, maybe perhaps 15, and hit Duplicate Special. And now if you go to Shaded Mode, you will notice that all these pieces are lined up perfectly. And we are ready to combine them together. So select the pieces. Okay, select all the pieces and then combine them together. Mesh Combine. Now, when you combine, you'll notice that you have all these transform nodes. Okay, so I'm going to delete the history first and delete away the transform nodes. Okay, again, delete history is Control-Shift-D. Oh, sorry, alt shift D. Right, so now you have your Picatinny rail done. But we still need one more step. We need to merge the vertices. Okay, this is where you have to be very careful because if you apply a very high merge value, all these edge loops will be destroyed. So watch your merge numbers. So go to mesh, edit mesh, merge. I'm going to use the default value and see what happens. So observe carefully, make sure that it doesn't collapse all the detail and hit merge. Okay, everything seems fine. All right, and all the components should be merged together now. How do you check? You double click on one face and all the face should be selected. You check the face loop, select one face, select, shift select the adjacent face, double click, and then if the loop continues, that means you've done a good merge. Right, so now you have created a single piece. Now for the rest of the parts, right, you will have to go and merge it together. For example, you can select this opposing edge using the bridge tool. You can bridge it to cover it up. Okay. Bridge. Okay, so I'm gonna select these two here and these two. Well, actually, I'm gonna select this one. Okay, because there's an edge loop here, I'm gonna have to insert one edge loop here. Okay, and then
I'm going to extrude this to the edge and then just merge all the way here. Press G again to extrude. Okay, let me undo that and then just extrude another portion here. So for this one, I will have to manually merge the vertices later on. But this is how I will cover up the holes. So once you've done it, you might want to rescale this, okay, and then place it on your weapon. So this is how I approach modeling uh, this component here, like the Picatinny rail. And it should subdivide nicely and everything should look very good. Okay, I'll stop the streaming now.